David Rader, the operations director for EquiSearch Midwest. Thank you so much. You, you got to thank you. Thank you, Dave, for joining. It's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Yeah, you know, Dave, it's it's such an important thing that's tugging at everyone's heart, this search for summer wells. It's uh, started out as a local story, and it's worked its way across the United States, and now is an international story. We have folks from South America, uh, South Africa. We have New Zealand, Australia, the UK. So, I mean, all eyes are on this, and uh, this small spring uh, um the Spring Creek, uh, Beach Creek neighborhood over in Rogersville, Tennessee. It's like nothing they've ever seen before, but we're talking about a little innocent five-year-old kid that has just virtually vanished. And uh, I wanted to bring you on to talk about the great work that EquiSearch has done in the past and now is doing here. Would you tell the folks what the mission statement is for Saturday coming up? Um, you know, it's it's our uh, it, it's the the logo that we've always stood by. It lost is not alone. So, um, and, and we stand behind that. It's it, just because you're lost, you're you're not alone. It's it's um, you know we um, I have got some great members, um, and, and we do this from the heart. And, you know, Ron, I, you, you know, here's the other thing too is is that Rogersville's never seen anything like this, and what I compare it to is. Um, this is their Kaylee Anthony. Uh, this is this is their little five-year-old child that's missing, and and it's part of them, and and that's what makes this so, um, you know, so special is that it's you know somebody that is so innocent, um, and, and needlessly that, that you know something has happened to this little girl, and we need to find her, uh, and and find out um, you know what exactly went down that day. Yeah, you know, and the, the the funny part about it is that, you know, there's so much chatter on the internet, you know, with Facebook and Twitter and, you know, these are all people who just want an answer. They want to find out, heck, what happened to this girl? And, and what they're looking for, and rightfully so, they're looking for answers from law enforcement. What does EquiSearch have to offer that law enforcement search uh, and rescue uh, teams do not have to offer? That's a common question that folks are asking you know the, the the whole thing is is that you know law enforcement wasn't designed to do what we do in the woods law enforcement is designed to do the investigation end of this and, and this is where we come into play is that we try to be a hand in glove scenario for law enforcement while they're on the uh, on the ground uh beating the bushes and, and getting the uh the pertinent information for us to go out and, and, and check specific areas, we're basically their eyes and, and their boots on the ground and covering those said areas. I mean, you, you know, we know how times are so tough and, you know, the um, uh, the budgets and, and everything, they don't have the manpower. Matter of fact, if you're looking at um, Hawkins County Sheriff's Office right now, along with their EMA down there, um, they're, they're gonna have a hard time justify well, not justifying but i mean trying to come up with the funds <laughs> yeah. to pay these the, the officers that that have spent hours upon hours right and you so, know what and dave um i watched that budgetary meeting i've been watching and i think most of the people here that are on this case most of the people that are watching and following closely that poor sheriff ronnie lawson went into that budget meeting and it seemed like he was getting attacked but yeah. the, the budget coordinators are like saying well how are we going to pay for this but they didn't say that they weren't going to pay for it. They were saying, well, we need to cut certain areas and re. So I, I, I kind of combed in on some of the conversation and a lot of people were just enraged and were like, oh, how dare they? But the, the budget people were saying, we're not going to not pay for it, but we got to just figure it out. But that's right. the thing. That's the thing, Dave, is that they're being, they're being stretched and they're being stretched real thin. Um, <laughs> You know, this is where an age, an, an, an organization like you, which is by by all means, a, you know, well equipped, but a five hundred one C three nonprofit, right? Is that did I get that right? Five hundred one. That, that, that is correct. Right. We're free. I mean, we're free. We don't we don't charge the family. We don't charge law enforcement. Um, it's a great gig for them. 
um, to, to be able to reach out to us and utilize what they may not even have. I mean, we got some of the best technology that's on the planet right. uh, that they may not have access to either. So, I mean, it's like I said, it's a hand in glove scenario. Rob. Hey, Dave, I want to uh, I want to bring on uh, an, another special guest that we have here. He is a retired detective sergeant from the Manhattan North Homicide Squad. He's got 27 years in law enforcement, but uh, 16 of those 27 years he spent working major cases and homicides uh, throughout Manhattan in New York City. Uh, and Bill uh, Bill Cannon from Police Off the Cuff is uh, joining us here. And I, the reason I had Bill come on is because he is like a treasure trove of information when it comes to investigations. And I know he's got a lot of questions. Bill, thank you for joining. It's my pleasure. I, you know, I just, I'm glad to be on the same show with David uh, Rader. You're definitely doing God's work here. And uh, I take off my hat to you. You know, it's it's it, it, and again, Bill. It's it's one of those things. We're all in this together. We're it's not like we're different teams. It's it's like we just have different, you know, the punting unit, and we got the the offense. We're all still on one team, and we're going after the the same thing. So I mean, it's we're all God said. I mean, let's just put it to you this way: we all have one goal in mind, and and that's to find this little girl or whoever. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And I, and I picked up on a lot of uh, statistics, like 400 missing persons returned, 400 plus missing persons returned home safely. Okay, that's a feat in itself. Uh, yeah. 238 plus uh, people who were found by this organization, by Equisearch, that were deceased, but brought home to their families so they can have closure. Sure. I mean, these folks go out to different countries, Aruba, they've been to Sri Lanka, they've been to Mexico, they've been to Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua. I mean, you guys aren't just servicing the United States, you're international. Correct. Yeah, I mean, wherever, you know, wherever we can go to help a family, that's what we'll do. And, and you know, you, you brought up Aruba, right? In, and I don't want to get off on a tangent, but, you know, the, the cool part about this was is that, you know, I got to meet Dave uh, Holloway, Natalie Holloway's father. Right. And he actually came and helped us on a search, even though that we have not found his daughter. And then what was really uh, a cool aspect of this is that how these other families kind of step in to help out other families of the missing is that Dave's sister, which was Natalie's aunt, came and helped me find a woman down in uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas, last year. She was part of the search group that, you know, this lady was missing for two years, and she helped find this woman. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, that says a lot. I mean, you know, even though that they're going through their tragedy, they put aside their own tragedy to help another family. That's what I'm saying by it's just, it's an amazing um Again, it's a hand in glove scenario. Everybody works together. It's a it's a beautiful thing when uh, you know a private organization like yourselves, you know, um, uh, uh, funded by donations, funded by generous folks who pledge uh, amounts monthly or pledge pledge one time amounts. And I encourage everyone to look in my description section before after this video is over. I'm going to put a link to the PayPal for. The um, David's chapter over in Ohio. It's the Ohio chapter of EquiSearch. You guys call it the Midwest. Uh, it's it's called EquiSearch Midwest. I will link that below in the description for anyone who wants to donate. It is a, a, a wonderful organization that I personally will donate myself. When I get done with this live stream, I will personally make a donation to uh, his chapter for the great work. When you want to talk about um, what you did the very first time, June, take us back to June 15th of uh, 2021. And when after that, when you guys arrived on the scene, uh, around what day or when was that that you guys first came on the set? She went missing on that Tuesday afternoon, reported missing about 6.40 that evening. Uh, we reached out probably on that Thursday to see if there was anything that we could possibly do to assist down there. Uh, we finally did get uh, a phone call back on that Saturday evening, probably at about five o'clock in the evening, wanted us to be ready to go on Sunday morning. I personally got uh, about seven of us together on short notice. Um, 
to go down to uh, Rogersville, Tennessee. I was on the ground in a hotel at 11 o'clock that night, ready to go for the next day. So, um, you know, there was multiple agencies. Who who called you, uh, David, to uh, come down there? Was it law enforcement or was it the family? Um, I, I, no, no, the family did not contact us. It was strictly through law enforcement, which was being um, handled through their emergency manager, uh, the the, uh, the Hawkins County EMA. Okay, so it was like the T- Timmy Coop, Captain Coop, and that his and his people. That is correct. Yeah, Tim Coop uh, was uh, uh, headlining this whole uh, this whole uh, uh, dance, we'll call it, and I'll tell you. I, he, he did one hell of a job as far as um, putting a lot of agencies and a lot of manpower on short notice and, and really covering a boatload of ground. It was incredible. Dave, Dave could you uh, just um, explain to us in our audience, when you got there, what was the organization like of this search? How was it organized? As Who would take what area? Who would take another area? What are we going to deploy? We're going to deploy horses. We're going to deploy aviation. We're going to deploy canine. Could you talk before, a little bit about that? Before yeah, you, I mean, it, you Dave, know, it was, it was, it was a, Dave, before you answer, I got to ask a favor of you because it's driving me crazy. Sure. Um, is there any way you can back up away from the camera because half of your head's get there you go. Every, you don't have to be that far or it, it, it's fine. But you, you right there is good. Um, okay. Everybody was no. I didn't look at the chat, but I know that I was going to get a lot of complaints because your, your forehead was cut off. So now everybody can see your beautiful locks of hair. Yeah, Dave, you have such beautiful hair. They want to see it. That's right. I'm sorry, brother. brother. I'm sorry. I don't have hair, so I could say that. But uh, I wanted the people to see you fully, and I didn't want to like have you know your, you know your forehead. I can't even see me. All I got, all I got on my screen is is is, is still the. Uh, You're perfect. Uh, the, the piece uh, led up to it, so I, uh, that's that's why I can't. Uh, All right. I couldn't tell how far I was. No, you're good, right there, Bill. You want to lead right. back into that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, right. I would just like to know when you when you when you finally got there and you had all your personnel put together. What was the organization of this search like? How was how was it put together? How was it? De- how were the personnel deployed? And how was it determined who would search what specific areas? And how would they? search these specific areas you know at the time they were we, they were still searching around the house thinking that this girl walked away so at that point in time there was no foul play ever mentioned or i don't think that was considered um so at that point in time they were strategically breaking down in and around that house into grids and then what they would do is keep all of your manpower together so they wasn't like basically breaking you up to put with another group. So they took those groups and depending on the qualifications and what you're used to is how they broke it down into where, what sector that you went to. Um, you know, they, they had aviation in the air, they had the helo, they had, um, they had dog teams. Uh, I think that they had five or six different dog teams down there. So they were strategically placing the dogs ahead of, uh, the foot searchers, and then we would go in behind them as a checks and balances. And it was well organized. Uh, they would actually take us to, they would bus us in uh, to each individual um, plot of land that we were going to do. And then we were in radio contact as far as if we, if we found anything, if we found any evidence. Uh, we were all GPS tracked. And I can tell you, uh, if I could share that with you, um, it, it, it's incredible on the amount of manpower that was in and around that uh, that piece of property in that mountain uh, over the course of those five or six days that I was there. You know, Dave, uh, so it, the, the, the folks are going to ask, uh, that is, there's different types of dogs, bloodhounds, there's cadaver dogs, what, what were all manner of dogs working this scene? Yeah, they were actually using uh, live track, and they were also using cadaver. Um, from what I understand, they could not get a very good uh, scent article from the house for summer because I think that everything was kind of shared. So I'm not too sure how well that uh, that played out. But they did use cadaver, and they also used um, they also used live track, and, and not one of them took us in any one direction. 
So was it confirmed, Dave, that they did bring in multiple uh, dogs into the home and outside of the home? Because there's been reports that the do- some dogs got the scent to the end of the road of the house, and then it, it, it stopped there. Is there any truth to that statement, Dave? From, from what I understand, um, yes. That, that, you know, as far as the interior of the house, I have no knowledge of that working. But um, I did hear on several occasions that the, the, the live track took it to the end of the um, uh, end of the driveway, and, and, and that's where they lost it. And usually that means they get into a car. But again, if, if you look up, guys, if you look up where this house sits um, and, and the thought possi- possibility of a stranger abduction, it does not make sense at all. Only for the simple reason that you have to go, you're, you're, you're in a secluded area, number one. Number two is, is that you have to come off of a main road to go down their road only to go back a long driveway. Right. And again, if they're all sitting in there and they're all there, the, the odds of that happening are, to me, are slim to none. And, you know, and Dave, we heard a lot about the family's dogs. And it said there was reported that there was anywhere from seven to 20 dogs. Can you confirm that? I, I cannot confirm that. I know that there was a couple of dogs, but as far as um, that many dogs, um, I, I can't confirm that at all. Which that I, would make it even more difficult for a stranger to come onto the property. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I would think that if, if she wandered away, I would think one of those dogs would go with her. I'm showing an overview of the property. I don't know if you could see that, Dave, but um, I'm, I'm going to go full screen with it. So you guys could see this is the house right here um, in the middle um, of the screen. So I'll bring it down. But this is an overview of the of the area. And here's the road that led to, um, you know, the that's their road uh, right alongside the 110 B. Uh, what is it? It's uh, Ben Hill. Ben Hill, right. Ben Hill Road. Yep. I, with my glasses, I could read up close, but far away, everything gets blurry. You know, this, this is what sucks about age, right? But anyways, so this is this is the home right here, uh, and you know, quite a bit of uh, you know trees, bush, you know, heavy bush all around it. And if you if you pan out, you know, you got random homes up over here to your right, um, and just it's just few and far between of uh, dwellings. So it's mainly some open fields across the way. And then just a concentration of a lot of hills, valleys, and, and heavy bush. Um, talk about some of the, some of the difficulties of searching that. I, I mean, on Google earth, you can't really tell how steep those hills are, but let me tell you from firsthand, um, a billy goat would have a damn hard time um, traversing some of these hills that we were on the side of. I mean, they were very treacherous. There was um, sticker bushes. There was, um, we had sightings of bear. We had a lot of copperheads. We had everything that you could think of. The heat was just incredible. Um, uh, it, it was taking a toll on, on, the, uh, on the searchers because it was so damn hot. It was like 90, 90 degrees, and people think, well, you're in the shade, you're in the uh, you know, you're undercover. There's no air under there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to, you know, I want to say that, you know, it's admirable for volunteers to come out. You, you have people coming from your, you guys are up in Ohio. So I would imagine that a lot of the, your personnel have come from your, from your local area or the surrounding area, right? You know, I've actually got one coming from, um, Evansville, Indiana. Wow. Um, uh, I've got them coming from Kentucky, of course. I've got them coming from Tennessee, of course. Um, I've got two or three people that are coming north of me from Dayton, Ohio. Right. Um, I had somebody reach out from West Virginia. Wow. So um, hey, your personnel that comes with you. First, I want to say thank you to Denise Spalding for the one hundred dollars super chat. Much appreciated. That's going to go and pay it forward. I'm going to send that directly over to Dave's organization. So thank you for that super chat, Denise Spalding. That's uh, one hundred dollars going towards the search for summer wells appreciate that uh thank you to all the members who become channel members uh what type of personnel dave that you have uh talk about retired um professionals do you have retired police do you have retired uh search and rescue pilots 
Uh, talk about some of those folks that come aboard with the organization. You know, we have so many different diverse individuals from different backgrounds. Um, we just have a new member today that's in the mining industry uh, that has um, a plethora of, of tools that, uh, that we could reach out to. Um, I've got some of the best technology that there is on the planet as far as drones. Um, some of these drones are thirty-five, forty thousand dollars that has near flare on or uh, near infrared. I'm sorry. Wow. And anybody that that doesn't really know, this is a new technology that they have developed that they can actually tell if a piece of ground has been disturbed from a drone. That's unheard of. So if we're looking for a grave, it could possibly be we could fly an area, and this infrared would be able to tell us if dirt has been turned over or moved in in any different way. Wow. It, and it's, it's detrimental only for the simple reason that instead of having a whole a whole team go and check that that anomaly out, we now can just sit there and send one or two persons to that because it's GPS marked, and that we can sit there and check out and, and see if it is a grave or it's it's something else. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've got uh, in underwater. We, we have a remote controlled sonar unit. So instead of putting divers in the water for cars, bodies, I can literally take this, deploy it within 15, 20 minutes, and I can tell you exactly what's in in the bottom of that uh, that retention pond or small now, lake. Now let me ask you. I don't mean to cut you off because you you were pretty much finished with that, but. When we look at guys like there's a channel here that has like a million subscribers, it's called Adventures with Purpose. Yep. So J Jared and his partner, uh, Sam, uh, go out and there's another guy with them now. They yep. go out and I've seen them like with a trolling uh, boat, like a trolling motor boat, and then they have that sonar equipment. Is that what it takes to go and scan or can you do it from like, uh, can you do it from a drone or a helicopter? Or No, it's, it's actually from the shore. So I, all I have to do is take it out of my truck, throw it in, scan it, bring it back, put it, put the SD card in the computer, and I can tell you exactly what's in that right, and I'm not even leaving the area. So I can do I can do smaller retention ponds to where the adventures with purpose they're more of the larger lakes. They actually work with a team out of uh, out of uh, St. Louis, Team Waters W A T T E R S. Um, they have helped them tremendously. Dennis and Tammy are probably one of the best in the water business as far as they have I think over 105 bodies uh, recovered to date. Wow. And so, you have them, and you have them on board with you. I have them on board, yes, sir. That is Dave, I, Dave, I want to ask you, um, to me, a very pertinent question. And you uh, sort of touched upon it almost unintentionally. You said that if she had walked out and, and actually walked down the road, that the dogs probably would have uh, found her. So I'm just going to ask you, do you think that the story told by Candace is plausible? No. No. Uh, you know, I, I, and I think, you know, something I, I, I really like that, you know, you're not an investigator, but based on you're coming from a different discipline mm -hmm. and that is deductive reasoning at its best. Yeah. And David, did you say a hundred percent? No, I, I don't think that it's plausible that, 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 that she wandered off and nobody could not, not with the amount of individuals that we had covering that mountain. And especially after day four, when I got there and the amount of people that surrounded that, it's almost like it, it just was a noose and it was just tightening up. There's no way she could have got out of that, that first circle without being spotted. And, and especially when you've got a helo with clear on it, um, you know, now all of a sudden you have to also remember, guys, that, that this little girl after day four has not had any water, has not had any nourishment. She's in dire straits at this point in time, so her movements are going to be slow, if not non-existent. So she's not even going to be a moving target at that point in time. And for a thousand people to sit there and literally not find this girl within the, the confines of that circle, I ain't buying it. Thank you. Um, let's talk about the first 48 hours. How important is that? I, I think the first hour is detrimental. Um, 
you know, 48. I mean, I, you know, a lot can happen in 48 hours. Right. You know, and the way I think of things, guys, and, and, and again, I, I don't want to piss nobody off or, or jump a bandwagon, but here's my thought and process on all of this across the United States. If you have a missing individual, I think law enforcement should have a search team or something like us. So when that individual goes missing, all hands are on deck and you put all those resources in there and you saturate. And I think that that's when you're going to have your best success is within that 24 hours, if not sooner. That's my, it's, that's my, it's, that's my but Dave, it sounds like, it sounds like you guys were all over that pretty damn quickly. You know, to me, that's how you have like an Alzheimer's person, uh, patient. And you're, but you're, you're searching the area according to the information that you receive from the complainant, who in this case is her mother, Candace. Right. But, but again, you, you also have to, my mindset, guys, is, is I'm also sitting there thinking, what if? So let's not, we're, we're, we got the business at hand, but let's not forget that if this, if this goes south and, and this does turn criminal, why not look at both avenues at the same time? Let's go out and start looking. Here's my thing, is that for every second of every minute of every hour of every day, we are, we are losing vital evidence either on that body or um, through other means. Right. And that's what's so important is to get as many people on the ground and find this individual so you can preserve that evidence. You know, and I thought what was really impressive about the um, 238 plus remains or folks recovered and brought back to the <laughs> families, I want to just emphasize never in one of these cases was the evidence compromised. Meaning, Absolutely not. Meaning was a crime scene tainted by someone inadvertently picking up a recovered body part or a moving a decedent. These right. guys are professionals and they know what they're doing. Uh, I, I tip my cap to you big time because these, these things are just uh, so important. And I, I want to just also ask you, and I don't know if you have this information because here's another thing that's swirling amongst true crime enthusiasts. And I, and I love my true crime enthusiasts. I love the people who pick your brain apart that ask you the tough questions. There's a thing swirling about, uh, um, about uh, Summer Wells that she was a special needs, that she was nonverbal and that she was a special needs. This is just a thing that I've, I've heard people speaking about. I have not heard law enforcement once because when an Amber alert goes out or if there's a search bill and I know from searching for thousands upon thousands of missings, if it's a special category, we call it special category. If it's somebody with, you know, that's Alzheimer's, that's you know, nonverbal, that's you know, autism, that's it is immediately transmitted because they want everybody to know. Do you have anything on that, uh, Dave, for us? No, I, I never once heard that that girl had any kind of special needs or wants. No, there was nothing to my knowledge. No, right, and it was more, never conveyed to me. Yeah, law enforcement would convey that to you, obviously, because you've Absolutely. done you've done hundreds of these searches, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that would be that would be. Well, I just did a case three years ago down in Tennessee, uh, baby Joe Daniels. Um, he was a special needs. He was five years old. Um, uh, supposedly, the, the the father did it. He confessed to doing it. He just got uh, charged with it. Uh, we still have yet to uh, to recover his body. Uh, but he was an autistic child. And not, nine times out of ten, when an autistic, and you guys can probably confirm this also, is when you have an autistic child, they always gravitate toward water. Always. It's almost there, there is no fear. Yeah. And there was two two ponds, good-sized ponds, by this by this child's house. And I think that he would have went to that and it never did. So, But no, it was never conveyed to us uh, that this child had Right. Any kind of special needs. I, 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 yeah. Thank you for that, uh, Dave. Uh, I, I just had to ask you because so many people send me messages about it and I yeah. see people speaking about it. Um, and, you know, there could be some kind of neglect that was going on. We don't know what happened inside that home, but it would be something clinical from a professional, a doctor, 
where it was certified that this person uh, suffers from uh, X, X, Y, and Z. Uh, law enforcement would know that and would be um, transmitting that on the Amber Alert, transmitting it on the missing persons report, and transmitting it to folks like yourself, Captain Tim Coop from the rescue squad over in Hawkins County. Um, uh, reached out, you reached out to him. He gave you the blessing and said, "Hey." We want a fresh set of eyes. We want fresh people to look at. And he actually said it in his last press conference, I think June 27th. We're going to shut this thing down, but we want to get fresh eyes and fresh people in here. So sure. I think it's a good idea. Um, can you talk a little bit about, um, I know we can't talk about location, but I want you to talk to the audience about the importance of keeping this close to the chest and not speaking about it. If somebody sees your organization, which has the markings all over the vehicles, you guys are high profile for safety reasons. Just speak to my audience about the importance of what you spoke about in that news piece and keeping this uh, investigation true. You know, and, and again, it's, this is an ongoing investigation that, uh, that, that people have to understand on social media. And, 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 and again, it's very pertinent is because we really don't know at this point in time who all the players of the game are. So we don't know if it's the family. It could be an outsider. And if they're watching all the social media and they're putting up to, you know, maps and where they were here and they were there, and this individual is watching all of this, you're, you're, all you're doing is, is enabling this individual to, to, to hide something that we're so desperately trying to find. So we, we have to have it to where it's like, look, we, we know that people mean well, and they want to say, well, they've seen this over here, and they've they seen this over there, but refrain from doing that only for the simple reason that we don't want uh, a potential perpetrator to, to get off on, on this and, and for some are never to be found because of somebody wanting to sit there and play armchair quarterback or detective or um, however you want to do it. But you have to sit there and think a little bit outside of the box and refrain from, okay, we've seen them over there, but, you know, uh, if you want to say that you've seen me in Kingsport or Rogersville, so be it. But I don't want anybody to, if they see me on a country road or a specific road or a specific piece of property, I can't have somebody telling this on social media. Unfortunately, I can't stop it. But I would think that common sense would tell people, hey, we don't want to give, if, if this is a killer's case, we don't want to give them the upper hand by coming back and moving this individual or some piece of pertinent evidence to a spot that where we were, we mark it off, never to be gone back to again until somebody decides to go back and either build a house or, you know, this, that, or the other. So it's very pertinent that, you know, we are going to be visible. We are going to be out there. All we ask is that just don't put out where we are at the time that you see us and, and everything will be fine. It's an important message because we are all in this together. We want to work together as a team. And Dave, correct me if I'm wrong. You need the public to work in cognizant, like together with you. We need cooperative. You know, everyone's got to cooperate here. And right. if we have friction going on, it's going to hurt who? Yeah, so, it's, it's going to hurt Summer. Right, Summer Wells. Yeah, that's that's all you're hurting. Is you, you're not hurting me. You're not hurting uh, anybody except the, uh, the the individual that we're looking for. So, and I'm not saying you know if you want to help out, go check your property, go check your uh, your your, uh, your your deer stands, uh, your 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 field cams. Right, trail Those cams. Are the kind of things that you can sit there and and go back and check. And if you see something that doesn't look right, then contact local authorities and let them decipher it. But but don't just sit there and some of the tips that come in are just, you know, don't, you know, anything could be pertinent. I, I mean, nothing, nothing should be taken off, but I mean, realistically, right. think about it before. Does this make sense before I call it? In? Right. Yeah. I, re I reached out to Tim Coop and I sent him a message. I told him I was going to interview you tonight and I gave him the invite, but I know he is too busy with this stuff. I didn't expect him to come, but I just wanted to give him the opportunity because I thought with both of you here, it might've, you know, might've increased the, the, the message, but just hearing you say it is enough because you're so well-respected the organization, um, you know, um, the search and rescue operation 
that you guys conduct is top notch and um the numbers don't lie you you guys have bring br- brought so much closure to so many families and like you said you brought families together that are now working together with you Vic- oh, absolutely yeah, families of victims are now working with you because they see the excellent work that you've, you've done. Bill, I know you're chomping at the bit. You, you got anything to put in here? You know, I, I don't know. Has, you know, everyone has heard about this um, red Toyota pickup truck that allegedly was seen in the area uh, around June 15th. Is there any further information on that? Or can you verify that it's still being looked at or it's, has it been eliminated? What what's the um, what's the investigative talk with that? From what I understand, they're still they're they're still looking for that red Toyota. And it was reported alleged to, by a neighbor locally on that in that local area, like one of the the surrounding neighbors. They didn't specify who, and I would imagine that they want to keep that close because they don't want that person being harassed or people going to him and asking him questions, him or her. Uh, but whatever the case may be, it has to be for a good reason. And we have to respect it and just sit back and say, hey, you know, um, if you see something like this, call it into the 1-800-TBI-FIND tip line. And I will link that also down in the description. And I'm going to link the Civis Bank for donations for the reward money. Uh, we have donated $500 from the Duty Ron Crime Time channel to that reward early on. And I had the college student who 19 years old, sophomore in college in East Tennessee, he put up 2000 of his own dollars. I had him here on the show. Uh, It's just a way of showing, uh, you know, uh, humanity coming together and um, putting our resources together to find a common goal. And that's find summer wells. Um, Tim, uh, Tim, um, Tim Miller, the founder of EquiSearch. I just want to talk a little bit about him. I know he had a health scare. Uh, I want a lot of the folks here uh, have been asking questions about him. Is he okay? I spoke to his office today and they said he's on the mend and he's recovered. He's a tough cookie. Uh, Can you you give the audience a little bit about the founder, this, this, uh, this, this young man, I'll call him a young man. He's got the vigor more than what I have. So talk a little bit about him. You know, I, I met Tim Miller back in, um, you know, and I, I didn't I didn't look to get into this, but um, just a little bit about how I got into this was um, I was on vacation down in Florida when Kaylee Anthony went missing. And, um, you know, I went to the house just as a, a busybody just to see what it was all about. Um, and, and when I sat, I sat across the house, uh, across the street from the house, and watched George Anthony clean a cooler for 45 minutes while his granddaughter was missing. Not a hair out of place, not a white T-shirt that was not a wrinkle in it, pair of cargo shorts. And I'm sitting there thinking, how in the hell can a guy that's missing his his granddaughter, I, I would be disheveled and I would be I would be beating the woods down. Right. And it just kind of set me off a little bit. And when I went back to the hotel room that night, that night and I watched Nancy Grace, and Tim Miller was on there, and, and he just captivated me with his with his story about his own daughter. And the next morning, I literally I said, "You know what? I got to do something to help to help bring Kelly home." And um, I contacted Tim's office. I said, "Hey, what what can I do?" I flew down there on my own dime. The following week, I met with Tim. I met people from all over the damn country, um, and so my story began. And, and with Tim Miller, it started with his with his daughter. Um, you know, she was part of the Texas Killing Fields, and uh, the man has a story. But but yet he has, and, and he knew that he he didn't want to be like nobody helped him, and he didn't want another family to be like him and, and never be helped. So that's why he started this organization. And in back in 2012, so this was 2008, 2012. Uh, I met with Tim, and he says, "You know, we I can't keep flying all over the country. I'm going to need somebody to kind of take a little bit of this off of me." I stepped up to the plate, and, and I created the Ohio chapter. And then the Ohio chapter turned out to be the Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, and, and now I'm in. I've been in 18 different states. I've been on probably 10 to 12 high-profile cases. 
Um, and I don't know how the hell my, my geography book must have been way off back when I went to school because I don't know how the hell Alabama, Mississippi, and Arkansas fits into the Midwest. Still can't figure that out. Part of that also. So I've got basically everything east of the Mississippi. Sorry, gentlemen. So I, I know the stream kept going, but I lost my Wi-Fi. Something happened. There was a power surge at my house. So I'm glad that you guys are still on. So I'm back. All right. I thought you um, went out. For, I thought you went out for a pizza or something. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everything just shut off and restarted. So I lost my Wi-Fi, which is amazing because you guys were still going. So thank you for taking over, Bill. <laughs> I was just li I was just listening. He was still talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Shoot. Thank you, Dave. I'm sorry. If I could, but getting back to Tim, uh, the the man he he always he always wants to get out, but then the phone rings. Um, he he is he has a special gift for doing what he's doing, um, and and nothing really gets the man down. Now he has had some health issues. Um, he'll he'll go down for a little bit, but he comes back twice as strong. So the the man is an icon in himself, and and I look up to. Uh, matter of fact, my my on my back, I, I believe in Tim Miller so much that I put I tattooed "Lost Is Not Alone" with his daughter's name on my back. So um, that's what that man means to me. Well, you know what? I'm so glad that I brought it up. Uh, you know, I, I have it here on my notepad to cover all of these grounds. And he went through such a, a health scare recently and everybody was so worried about him. I had to talk about this and I'm so glad that he's on the mend. Let, me, let me quickly say um, thank you to all the super chatters. Uh, Natman, there was another $100 super chat that came in. So many of you folks have been sending in super chats and I'm going to be paying this all forward. Every super chat that's come in tonight is going to go directly to Dave uh, and his organization. Um, they're going to be working hard this weekend. How many days will you be there or is that uh, is that uh, classified information? No, uh, um, I'm going to leave Thursday uh, after work. I want to get on the ground on Friday and really do some heavy recon, get my mapping all together so on Saturday morning I'm ready to rock and roll and I don't um, I don't waste any daylight. Um, and then we'll probably take, if we don't get anything, everything done that we want to uh, succeed with, then we'll go into Sunday. You know, we're all volunteers. I mean, we all have families. We all have jobs. Uh, we don't get paid for this. Um, you, you know, and, and these people sacrifice their weekends for me and for this and for whatever family that we're looking for. And God love them. I mean, they're, you know, their heart is in the right spot. And thank God that um, there are more, there's more good in this world than there is these guys. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer. I've seen it. You've got people that come come uh, from miles and, and states away to help somebody that they know nothing about or nobody knows. Yeah. So that, that shows you the kind of individuals. And, the, and, and, um, and I'm going to say something, too, to back up what Dave is talking about here. I reached out to him today um, by, I sent him, actually, I called him and he didn't answer my call, but he called me back because, you know, us, us folks, we, in, in the law enforcement and in the, in the, in the field he's in, he gets so many calls. If he doesn't recognize the call, he's like, I'll get back to that person. So he got back to me after I left the message, but we both were sitting at work, me and him. So, yep. you know, here we are um, at, you know, at nighttime, he's given us some of his time. And I got to say a special thank you to you for coming aboard here and, um, you know, coming on to the Crime Time with Duty Ron family and giving all of the viewers, there's over 2,200 here watching in the chat, um, a, a look into what Equisearch has to offer to families. And I, and I want to say this, is I covered a case, and I'm still covering right now, uh, two little boys from California City, Orin and Orson West. They went missing on December 21st of 2020. I'm sure that you know the name, you've heard of it. Um, the, those boys, again, vanished without a trace. They said outside of their backyard, outside of the Mojave Desert. And Dave, we have no answers going in 200 plus days of these boys being missing. I, I would say, you know, I know you need to be reached out by the family um, or law enforcement. Uh, I say to that family, this is a great resource here to reach out to. Um, do you have any 
anything for them out there in California City and Bakersfield uh, for Orin and Orson West? Any advice, anything that they can do to get maybe some attention on these boys for search? Just never give up and, and, and just keep pounding. And, and you know, I, I and, and again, it just may not tie into what you're saying, but I, I think it does. But how can one or two persons know what a thousand can't find? It's the worst game of hide and seek that you could ever play. And, 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 and my goal is is that I never give up. If there's if there's a if there's even an inkling, I'll go back and do it again and again and again and, and, and just keep doing it. Right. You know, it's never give up. Um there's gotta be answers. There they've got to be somewhere. And, and you hope to God that somebody would just grow a heart and say, this is what happened. Right. Uh, but until then, we continue to search. And, and I would tell that that, that family, um, keep reaching out to, to law enforcement. Keep reaching out to uh, the media, uh, places, you know, that you can get the word out in those boys' names. Even you, I'm just you mentioning this, the 2,200 people. Right. You know, I, I say, Dave, is that like they are, um, it's almost like they've been forgotten uh, in a sense because of the time that's gone by. Uh, I sponsor a digital billboard for them on Highway 99 in Bakersfield. That's, you know, quite a bit of resources and it comes in from my generous um, donations, donors from the viewers. Um, we put up $4,000 in reward money for those boys because here's a three and a four year old. Now they're four and going on five. And they just vanished. And the parent's story, again, just like this one, don't make sense. It doesn't jive. No. Is there a chapter in that Southern California district of EquiSearch, or is that off the, the grid for you guys? No, I mean, nothing's off the grid. It, it's just that we don't have a chapter. We have we basically my chapter and the original down in uh, Texas are, are the only two um, chapters that we have. Now there is people down in Florida, and I've got and I've got people in every single state that I've been to, and I build up a rolodex of my you know, everybody that I come in in, in contact with. Um, so when I go back, if I ever have to go back into a certain specific area or state, I've already got those individuals already lined up and ready to rock and roll through my uh, through my rolodex. So. Uh, we don't have anybody out there, but again, if there's ever something that comes up to where, you know, we could put one of our, uh, something of our technology to good use, we will absolutely do that. Not a problem. Let me ask you, uh, you know, when this is all said and done and you guys are, you know, doing your thing after this live streams over and, and maybe in the, in the, in the days next, you know, next week or whatever, uh, maybe we, you and I can have a conversation about that case and, uh, any help that we could give to that family. I know that if, if it can be done, I know you will. And I'm Absolutely. Gonna, would you, would you be agreeance to, to talk with me about that on the side? Absolutely. With, I, without a doubt, anything that I can do to help anybody run. Uh, I will absolutely, absolutely thank, do that. Thank you. thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Bill, you got yeah, something? Yeah, I, I, I do have something, Dave. Um, maybe you could just touch upon how some of the investigative steps that they have taken have maybe bore some fruit and maybe narrowed down the areas that you have to search because they've done things like cell phone towers. Uh, I would think they've done warrants on their computers. We talked about something called geofencing that can, it's very, you know what it is. It's very high tech. Have any of those investigative steps they've taken narrowed down the search that you have to do? You know, I, I don't know that part of the, the investigation. I, all I know is is that they've done a three-mile grid. Um, and again, Bill, you, you, you know it as well as I do, um, because things got out of the bag as far as on what phones can do. These guys are getting, you know, if you want to commit a crime, they tell you, they're, they're, gonna, they're not going to take their phone. Um, they don't, they, it's leaving a digital footprint everywhere that they go. Now that well, they know that. They get, they'll use a burner phone or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's, I still think that some shit shouldn't be out there. I, they shouldn't, they shouldn't tell you what, what a car can do or what a phone can do. Right. Um, keep that close to the vest for law enforcement. And, and I would think that, you know, a, a lot of these cases would have been solved, but the, the problem is, is that it's got out there and, People have blurted it out, <clears throat> and, and 
And now the killers are getting wise on, well, I'm not going to take my phone. I'll just, you know. Um, yeah, I'll sometimes, just sometimes law enforcement, we could be our own worst enemy uh, by <laughs> revealing you know, some of these. I, I don't even think it's law enforcement. I just think that people can kind of figure it out and read between the lines. I mean, hell, look at the damn TV shows. That's on. That's uh, that's out there, and they yeah. and they're showing this. I mean, yeah, I do. Think, I, is given, yeah, I think they give away too much, and and okay. what you, yeah, what you gentlemen are talking about, it gives a little bit too much of an advantage to the bad guys. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you quickly before I forgot because I got a whole. Listen, I'm sparing you because I have three pages of this. Uh, I'm only condensing it to one page, so <laughs> I still got I still got 27 percent on my phone. So, and how long do you want me to talk? I'm right here with you. I love it, brother. Thank you so much, Dave. <laughs> You're the best. Um, uh, Captain Tim Cook. We already know that you have talked with him. He is the search and rescue guy, right? Um, That's right. Sheriff Ronnie Lawson, any communication with him about the case? Not that I want you to speak about it, but any communication from Sheriff? No, I, I, what I did was I reached out to, because there was a chain of command. Right. And, and again, Ronnie has a lot on his plate. Oh, yeah. Um, that's why I reached out to Coop. And I said, this is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. Um, so we have a checks and balances uh, that um, he will get mapping when I'm finished. And then he will share that with TBI, FBI, and also with Ronnie, with uh, his sheriff's department. And let me say, Ronnie has got some fantastic um individuals on that it's a small department but i'll tell you what boy did they sit there and welcome us with open arms that's awesome you know and a small town sheriff like that is not used to seeing a case on this grand stage like this no. uh, do you got an idea of how many members because i've looked high and low and i can't find anything about what do they have 20 30 sheriffs or is it is it smaller is it like three four? I, I think that they're up around 30 to 40 from, okay. from what, I, what i was told so i think he's he's kind of i mean it's a small county it's hawkins yeah hawkins county yeah uh, yeah so 30 or 40 and you know you got so much ground to cover it's a tough on taken uh anything from leslie uh earhart from the tbi or the lead detective that we saw in that piece any like i'm talking about from when you guys were there the, the first time uh, anything from them? No. Um, again, we had, you, you know, again, my main contact was, was through Coop and EMA, and then they would filter it into, uh, in, into the investigation end of what we covered. So it was, like I said, it was a well-oiled machine, you know, from, right. you know, in all law enforcement agencies, you know, the whole, everybody, the FBI, PBI, Hawkins County, they all sat down every single day. And was communicating with each other what they had, so then we knew what the what the next step was 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 going to do and how we were going to attack it. I was very impressed with the question Bill and I spoke about this before you showed up in the green room um, while we were preparing for the show. Uh, I was impressed by your answer to what Bill asked you. He asked about what was the structure of when you arrived on the set the first time. Was it chaos and it was very i was very happy to hear that it was organized and things were put together you know and they yeah. had they were outside of the uh, the church and they had the whole property there I, i'm assuming you guys were over there right for uh, uh debriefing and things of that nature no yeah we were uh, that was our uh, command center that was the heartbeat of what we were doing that was what we worked out of um it was small uh but it accommodated every uh, everything that we we could ever ask for the, 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 the whole county down there the cell phone service um was horrible wow. um, we had very little communication matter of fact i didn't even have in some parts of going even going to the command center i didn't even have satellite radio that's how remote we were oh, they actually crap. brought in um portable boosters from at&t and verizon portable boosters and set it on the command center's parking lot in order for us to just be able to kind of get out a little bit further. Wow. So that's how remote that we, we truly were. So you were working UHF or VHF VHF is for short distance. You were using probably UHF to communicate. Yeah, we were, were we using police and fire channels? Um, right. and then we would go to, um, 
then we would go to the private um, channels, uh, and, and so so media couldn't. In case something was found, we had uh, checks and balances as far as codes uh, that right, that right. we use. You can donate directly to them here. Super chats, thirty percent gets taken by YouTube. Um, if you go directly down in the description, I'm going to link their um, PayPal. Uh, can I get that off your Facebook, uh, Dave, or is it on yeah, your Yeah, we're, we're under the EchoSearch Midwest. Uh, that's our Facebook and, and uh, also our website. And the, uh, the PayPal link will be in there, right? That is correct. Okay, folks, I will link that here down below in the description the direct official PayPal for David's organization. I encourage you all to go over there. I'm going to be putting up a big donation tonight. Of all, I got to do some calculations, but whatever it is, I'm going to throw in uh, an extra $250 from my pocket as well to uh, the EquiSearch folks. I just I, I just have one question, and, and maybe it's an unfair question, and if you don't want to answer it, that's fine, but gut feeling, you think you're going to recover summer? Um. I pray to God that you know, I'm, Bill. That's that's a tough question. Um, if she's out there, I want to find her, and 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 I want to do everything I possibly can. But then, on the other hand, um, on the other end of the sword, you, you sit there and you think, well, if she was abducted or given away or whatever, and she's still walking amongst us. That would be the best case scenario. And the reason that I say things like that is, is because you have to look at J.C. Dugard after 29 years. You have to look at Elizabeth Smart after, what, nine months. Anything's possible. You know, we know where the hell this little girl isn't. I mean, we covered enough ground. We know where the hell she's not. Now we just have to keep expanding this circle um, until it just doesn't, it doesn't make any more sense. If that makes any sense, yeah. you know something. I, I, did, do I, I, do I hope to, to recover her if she's out there. Yes, because I wanted I want to give it back. I want to give her back to the family. Well, David, uh, you know something. I think you answered that question much better than I thought you could have possibly answered. And you're you're right. The if she could be recovered alive, you know, which there is always a possibility, but you know, in this case, we all know the facts and. Um, as you said early on, it doesn't make sense. No. No, I think that there's one or two people know exactly what happened that day and what they did with her. And and I hope to God that, you know, again, that they would... Um, come forward, if they come, come forward, forward and tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. And there's the 1-800-TBI-FIND tip line. You can leave an anonymous tip or you can leave it on the um, email. I'll link the TBI's email and the um, 800 number where you can call and leave any kind of message. If you see something or if you know something, say something. 